last lesson is for fourth grade. It is the first lesson in our unit over properties of matter. It's a very short unit. Um, these lessons will go quick. Um, but this lesson, again, just focuses on matter. What is matter? Properties of them. And uh, just getting some basics, building blocks here before we move into changing matter in our next unit. Uh, this lesson is describing matter. It has a plethora of vocabulary, including what is matter, property, mass, volume, buoyancy, and the states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Quite a, Not a lot in here. We'll hit it fairly quick, uh, but good, important stuff. So let's get to it. So right away, the important question, what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Most things are made of matter. The air you breathe is made of matter. Uh, the computer that you're watching this on is made of matter. If you're watching it on an iPad, that's made of matter. If you were reading a book, it's made of matter. Um, almost everything is made of matter. Now, light and heat, they are not matter, however, because they don't take up space. So again, remember, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Mass is different from weight. Don't get the two confused. Weight it has to deal with gravity. We will talk about that in another lesson. So mat matter is what is in the object. Mass is um, how much is in the object. Okay. One way to describe matter is by its properties. A property is a characteristic that you can observe. So characteristic and property, they're synonyms. They, they kind of are interchangeable here. They mean almost the same thing. Properties can include things such as color, shape, and size. Those are your most popular properties of matter, but those aren't the only ones. So when you're naming or describing an object, you're describing its properties, and it's almost near impossible and probably is impossible to try to describe an object without describing its properties. For example, if I said, describe the chair that you were sitting in, if you're sitting in a chair, for example, well, right away you would probably try to tell me the color of it. You would try to tell me how large it is, if it's soft, if it's hard, and, and things of those nature. Those are properties. You can't describe the object without mentioning them. One very important property of matter is mass. Mass is the amount of matter making up the object, how much matter is in it. Mass is often measured in units called grams or kilograms. It's used, you measure grams and kilograms and measure mass using the tool that you see here. It's called a balance. Um, another property of matter is volume, or how much space does it take up. We measure volume by counting the number of cubes that can fit in the object, and we also measure volume using tools called graduated cylinders, which you've probably seen in a lab. They probably, you think of them as beakers. They have uh, measurements in milliliters on them. Some properties we can't see, um, but can still be measured. For example, magnetism. This is the ability of matter to attract certain metal objects. That happens with your iron and nickel and cobalt elements. Another unseen property is the ability to dissolve in a liquid. For example, say you like Kool-Aid or... Um, any of those little quick packets that you can pour in a bottle of water and shake them up. Um, you stir it, it shakes, it, you have a powder, and then it goes away, it dissolves into the liquid. That's, that's a property. When a substance appears to dissolve and blends in, it seems to disappear. So sugar and, and salt also will do that. But another powdery-like substance, grainy, like sand, it will not. Not all objects have that property. Properties come in very useful and they're um, handy in trying to do certain things. You have to think about what can this do in order to um, find the right tools. Um, 
in choosing what you're doing. For example, when strength's needed, iron's a good choice if you're trying to build something, maybe a building. Uh, wood is better if you need a lighter material that can be shaped easily. Buoyancy is another property that comes in handy in building boats. Buoyancy is the upward force of a liquid or gas on an object. So if you're able to float in the swimming pool, you're buoyant. Uh, rubber duckies, they're buoyant. Myself cannot float, so I'm not very buoyant. <laughs> Some objects are more buoyant than others. So again, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space, and we can describe it using its properties, such as color, shape, size, mass, volume, the ability to dissolve, magnetism, and buoyancy, for example. Matter comes in many forms, and we refer to these forms as states. Not like the state of Kentucky or Tennessee or California or Florida, not those type of states, but this state definition means form. The three forms or states of matter. They are solid, liquid, and gas. These are the most common ones found on Earth. And then, yes, you do have your plasmas, but we will not be discussing that in this um, video. Just the three common states on Earth. Solids have definite shapes and a definite amount of space. Their particles are tightly packed, tightly grouped together. Examples of these objects, like the saxophone here, um, your desk, books, those are solids. They're not going to change shape. Um, they're always going to take up that amount of space. Liquids, on the other hand, um, are different. They have similarities to solids, but they're different. Um, liquids do not have a definite shape, but they do take up a definite amount of space. So they have a definite volume, but the shape uh, always changes. It, liquids take the shape of the container that they're in. Um, if you have a small, and by the way, their particles are a little bit more loosely packed together. Um, take, for example, the, the juice in this glass. Um, it's going to have the same amount of volume whether it's in this glass or we put it in a graduated cylinder. If it spills out on the floor, it's going to take the shape of the floor. But there was the same amount of juice that was in the glass. Um, the particles in the juice, like we said, they're, they can move more freely and they can change places with each other and they can slide past each other and they're farther apart than a solid. So you juice, again, milk, water, oil, those are all liquids. The last form of, or state of matter we're going to talk about is gases. Um, a gas does not have a definite shape, it does not have a definite volume, it changes. Um, so it's similar to a liquid in that it doesn't have a definite shape. Helium, oxygen, those are types of gases. Unlike a liquid, though, gas does not, again, have a definite amount of space. It's going to fill the shape and space of the container. Uh, helium in a balloon takes the shape of the balloon. And if the balloon bursts, the helium is going to spread out into the air. If you're breathing in a, uh, your room, air and oxygen is filling up that room. If you open the door, it's going to fill up your room and go into the hallway, into another room, and, and so on. The particles move very, very freely and fast in a gas, um, just to, quick enough to fill up the space around them. If there's less space to fill, then they're closer together. A gas always spreads to fill out the entire container that it's in. So, again, the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Solids have definite shapes and definite volumes. Liquids have a definite volume but not a definite shape. And a gas does not have a definite shape or a definite volume. Finally, what happens to the matter that we use? We're using matter all the time. The food we eat, uh, the chairs we sit in, the books we read, the computers we use, everything um, is made of matter. Some matter, like air, is going to be used over and over again. Other forms of matter get thrown away. Too often it becomes trash and it goes into our oceans and landfills and we need to take care of our environment. 
Um, ways to take care of that is to reuse matter. To reuse something means to use it and then use it again for something different. Say you had a coffee can that was using had coffee in it, and then when it went empty, you might have used it to hold pennies or quarters or nails. It became a different type of purpose for its container instead of throwing it away. Matter is also recycled or made into something else. See, the difference between recycled and reused is that when you recycle something, you totally change it into something different and give it a different purpose. Cans, paper, plastic, glass, they can all be recycled. So some objects of matter you can see here made by people, such as piggy banks and clocks and shoes and other types of matter are made in nature, uh, different rocks and fruits and trees and wood. So there's different uses of matter. This is a quick lesson over describing matter, which the main focus here was what is matter, which is anything that takes up, um, has mass and takes up space. We also focused on its properties, which are its characteristics, which is color, shape, size, volume, mass, the ability to dissolve, buoyancy. We also talked about the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, and um, their differences in shape and volume. And we also talked about how to um, help our environment and use matter wisely and taking care of the environment through reusing and recycling. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the comment section below, or students may message me on Edmodo.